issues such as climate change, indigenous issues, and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals with your teachers. And through doing this, you have proven that you're never too young to begin to think and act both as global citizens and innovators. We are thrilled that you are here with us today, Minister Baines, uh, to speak with us about the importance of STEM and community involvement to Canada's future. And so please, once again, welcome, uh, join me in welcoming <laughs> Thank you uh, very, very much uh, for that kind introduction, and it really is a privilege for me to be here. You know, I do a lot of fun things, but this is really cool. I get a chance to hang out with you guys. I heard you guys have class right now, is that right? Yes. yes. Do you guys don't mind spending time here? Yes. Yeah. Well, I thought you guys wanted to get a head start on your homework. No. So I no. 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 Like that. I wasn't sure. Um, so I was told that I get a few minutes to say some opening remarks. And I really look forward to an opportunity to answer any questions you may have. So this is not about me talking to you and telling you stuff. It's about me sharing some of my thoughts and ideas with you. But I would really, really welcome the opportunity to hear your issues, to hear about your concerns or questions that you may have. So please don't hesitate to ask. I just want to start off with a quick story. And then I really look forward to our Q&A session. So I actually moved uh, to Brampton in grade five. And guess who my neighbor was? Kabir's dad. No, Kabir's too young. I just want to make sure I can put, I know Kabir looks old, but not that old. So Kabir's dad was my neighbor. We lived on Ray Lawson, not too far from here, just on the southern tip of Brampton. So I moved in grade five, dad and his dad as well, we hung out. And so I can really relate to you guys. When I walk into the room, it brought back so many good memories. Uh, you know, I was born in Toronto. I grew up in Jane and Finch. And then my parents decided to move to this place called Brampton. So like, whoa, Boys, and it was like really, talking. really far from Jane and Finch. And this was in the mid-1980s. So back in the day, you know those cassette players? Have you ever seen those? VHS? Yeah. You guys know, have you ever heard of that stuff? Yeah. yeah. Never. Boy, am I old. <laughs> right? So I moved here. You know, in grade five, and just like yourself, I can relate when I look at you guys. It reminds me of my beginnings here in the region of Peel and Brampton and Mississauga. And I grew up here, and you know, just like yourself, very proud of who I am and enjoying the community and really getting out there and getting involved in different things. I love to play sports. I was reasonably good at basketball, reasonably good at baseball. So I love sports and I really had a lot of fun. Then I went to high school at Turner Fenton. Anyone familiar with Turner Fenton? Any family, friends, relatives? So it's not too far from here in Kennedy uh, and on Steeles. And when I just entered high school, I remember watching the news. And at that time, there was this big, big deal about a gentleman by the name of Bobage Singh Dillon who wanted to join the RCMP. So that was, you know, it's a straightforward thing. You want to join the police, right? You want to join our national police force. That sounds pretty cool, right? But the issue was that he wore a turban and had a beard. And all of a sudden, people were just outraged. How can someone with a turban and a beard maintain their turban and beard and be part of the national police force? And he was told, oh, can you shave your beard and can you cut your hair and remove your turban? And he said, why do I have to pick between my faith who I am and my ability to serve. And he was just confused. He's like, what's the big deal? And, you know, there was a lot of debate, a lot of discussion. Some people were supporting him and some were opposing him. But at the end of the day, common sense prevailed. But something else also prevailed because he knew he was backed by a very, very important document. Are you guys here? But it meant a lot to see someone that I could relate to be given the opportunity to pursue his career. And so fast forward, in 2004, as the saying goes, I decided to put my turban in the ring. I decided to run for federal politics. I wanted to represent the community that I grew up in. Just like yourself, I spent a lot of time here. And when I was entering the general election, I got some advice. Someone pulled me aside and said, you know, we're political strategists, you know how to win, and uh, we have some advice for you. I said, sure. I was young, I was eager, I wanted to learn, I wanted to understand how I have 
and it improved my chances to win. So this gentleman sat me down, I won't mention his name, had been involved in politics for a very, very long time. And he said, you know what, what's your name? I said, Navi Baines. He said, well, keep Nav, small font, and Baines, really large, and put that on all your signs. Okay, he said, last name for the ballot, E. Baines. And he said, you know the pamphlets that you're gonna hand out? Don't put your picture on. So it didn't dawn on me immediately. Why? I think I was a pretty good looking guy. <laughs> Maybe I gained a few pounds during the nomination process, but I can lose that weight, right? I'm on the track now. So it didn't really register why. And then it clicked in. He wanted me to, you know, not necessarily be out there in the public and put my picture and face, because he was worried. I, because I look different, that I may not be able to win. And that bothered me enormously. Because this is my community. Remember the story I told you about Mr. Dillon joining the RCMP? I thought we already had these debates. I thought it doesn't matter what you look like or who you are or where you come from. As long as you have good ideas and you're passionate and you care about people and you want to represent people, that should be that what matters. So I said, forget this. I said, thank you very much, but no thanks. And I decided to put my picture on every single flyer. I decided to go to every single debate. I knocked on every single door. I wanted people to know who I was. I had nothing to hide. And guess what? Who won by the most number of votes in the region? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was like, go to the other person. So the point I wanted to make was, I didn't hesitate. I was very confident about who I was, and people saw that confidence. You know, people agree or disagree, that's politics. We disagree or agree with our brothers and sisters, with our parents, with our friends, so disagreeing is not an issue. But people, you know, so like individuals with confidence, with passion, with vision, with some sort of direction. And the point of that story is this. When I look around in this room, I see myself. I see a little nav. Many, many years ago, not when I was 16, but close. And when I see myself, and it's so important that when you want to either go into politics, go into music, you want to become a teacher, an engineer, a doctor, an artist, whatever is it that you want to pursue, do not let anyone tell you that A, you're too young, or B, just because you look different or you may have different ideas, that you should hold yourself back out of who you are, embrace yourself, be passionate, and follow your dreams. And so that's the message I want to convey to you before I get into our conversation around policy and politics. It's my personal story that I think resonates with you, and I hope it's a reminder. As you, you know, go through school, as you go to grade seven, eight, nine, you go to high school, and maybe, maybe college or university, you'll have a lot of naysayers. You have a lot of people whispering in your ears saying, ah, don't do that, it's too tough, or you're too young, or you know, no one's gonna necessarily want to work with you, or etc. Et so there's always these negative connotations, negative voices. Ignore them. Stay positive and believe in yourself, and you will be surprised at what you can achieve. So now fast forward to 2015. Um, I was very fortunate to, to win the election. Remember, in 2004 I ran, I won. 2006 I ran, I won. 2008 I ran again, because these were minority, minority governments, so we didn't have, in case you guys are not familiar with the political process, but we didn't have the confidence in the House of Commons or sufficient amount of votes uh, to form government for a four year period. So we kept on having these elections. And then in 2011 I got my butt whooped. Like, I lost that. So I decided to pursue other passions, other careers. I went to Ryerson University. I taught there. I went to Waterloo. I taught there. And then I decided to run again to support Prime Minister Trudeau. And in 2015, I was very fortunate to win. And he gave me the responsibility to be the Minister of Innovation, Science, and Economic Development. And you guys familiar what that portfolio is responsible for? Anybody want to guess what, what that might entail? Again. There's no thing a bad answer, so feel free. Yes. Industry. Bingo. Actually, that portfolio was an industry portfolio. It was actually the Minister of Industry before, 
I was given the responsibility. And we changed the title to Innovation, Science, and Economic Development. And so this portfolio is really about, uh, me as a, as a person responsible for this portfolio, is really about making sure that we grow the economy, that we create good jobs, and we focus on STEM, as I mentioned before, on science, on technology, and engineering and mathematics. And frankly, I would say it's more than that. It's about making sure those individuals that want to pursue science, technology, engineering and mathematics also coordinate with individuals who are in business and law and arts. But that's where a lot of the magic comes. And fundamentally, if I had to ask you guys, what do you think innovation is about? Anybody want to guess what innovation is about? If you get a, okay, there we go. So make the country better? Sorry, again, last part? Wow, that's, again, that's a pretty brilliant answer. She pretty much answered it. Sorry, guys. She knocked out that part. That was pretty darn impressive, so thank you for that. But that's what innovation is about. It's not about the latest gadget. It's not about the latest toy or technology. Innovation is fundamentally about making things better. And for me, innovation is about making Canada better. So you nailed it, that was the perfect answer. And so for us, innovation is just not simply about you know, all this new robotics and automation and technology, but it's about making our communities better. It's about making our healthcare system better. It's about making sure that you guys, when you get older, have every opportunity to succeed in the new jobs that are being created. There's a lot of change taking place in the job market. And so that's my primary responsibility. And I know you guys have been learning about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And there's 17 of them, I was told. So very impressive. And one of them has innovation and economic development. But I am more than willing to answer any questions you have around any of those goals. Or more broadly speaking, about government, about what I do, how I represent you. So any questions you have, if you guys want to know, yes, I've lost 20 pounds. <laughs> it's true, I know the rumors are going around, I know people have been asking, it's so true. But uh, no, but any questions you have, because I've been more than my fair share talking, so feel free to please ask me any questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, By the way, that's a very impressive outfit. Thank you. What is the government going to do about contaminated water and poor living conditions for indigenous people? Justin Trudeau said that something would, um, said that something would happen for them, but it hasn't yet. Why is that? So, I was uh, driving here with my friend Neeraj, and I said to Neeraj, he goes, oh, this is going to be lots of fun. I said, no, we have no idea. <laughs> 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 we have no idea, because I've been to school, <laughs> and especially this age group, but as the toughest question. <laughs> and this is tougher than the House of Commons. <laughs> I kid you not. And so, there was I right? You were absolutely So that is a brilliant question. So that's a brilliant question. I'm glad that's the first question. And I'm sweating now. 